Today on The Young and the Restless, Maria makes a move. Lily tells Billy her worries about Daniel, and Phyllis asks Daniel if Heather is stirring up old feelings. Maria joins Devon for dinner at the GTAC. The babysitter has her on speed dial. She's been driving herself crazy since Tessa left for a photo shoot in New York. Devon thought she could use some company. She talks about how much of a sanctuary work can be from heartbreak. He knows what she means. Work has saved him many times and he encourages her to remember that and also that she can always lean on him and Abby. Every time Maria looks at Aria and thinks about all the things she's missing out on, she nearly bursts into tears. Her little girl can't hear Tessa's singing, the horses neighing, or her talking absolute nonsense. She gets choked up. He points out that hearing aids will likely solve this problem. Although she knows that she's been having nightmares, Devin doesn't think she should take those seriously. She keeps worrying. Her mind can't stop going to the worst place possible. He warns her that speculating like that will drive her insane. Leaning in, she urges him to give her the worst-case scenario so her mind will have nowhere else to race to. What should she be worrying about that she doesn't even know she should be worrying about? Begging, she asks him for the worst possible outcome so she'll know she can take it. Against his better judgment, he says the worst-case scenario is that Aria doesn't hear and they have to find new ways to communicate with her, like text and sign language. She gets him to show her some signs and he teaches her to spell her daughter's name and how to sign mother. He urges her to be brave. He walks her to the door and she thanks him for talking her down and caring about her family. Devin reminds her that they've been through a lot and they will always have her back. He asks her to bring her daughter to stay at the Chancellor house so they aren't alone. Maria says it sounds like fun but is reluctant. Eventually, she agrees and they head out. Maria and Devon arrive at the Chancellor estate with Aria. He tells her this is her home now and she thanks him before he walks off to make some work calls. Billy plays with a napkin in crimson lights as Lily wanders in and wonders what's going up with him. She can tell he's having a hard time keeping something inside. I think I could say the same about you, he suggests. Lily feels stupid saying it out loud. Billy assures her that her stupidity will never catch up to his. She explains that Heather has been staying in town and doing pro bono work. After talking to the lawyer the other day, she got the impression that she wasn't resolved about how things ended with Daniel. Her ex reminds her that feelings don't just vanish. Lily knows that but doesn't know where her rekindled relationship with Daniel is heading. There's a chance he could be pulled back to the other woman. The abbot asks where she wants things with Daniel to go. She's not even thinking about that after the speed bumps she's hit in relationships over the past few years. He's sorry about that. She assures him she's not talking about him. Lily knows that she and Daniel are good. Billy is sure that Daniel is not enough of an idiot to mess that up. Lily changes the topic to Chelsea leaving town and she asks how much Billy is missing her. He's missing Connor too, but thinks Chelsea is just being a good mom. If Chelsea isn't upsetting him, she assumes the problem is Jabot. He admits the company is in flux. She offers to listen without judgment. Billy fills her in about Ashley leaving the company and starting a new one with Tucker to compete. He was stuck in a huge feud between his siblings and their spouses, who were trying to get him to sabotage them. He remained loyal to Jack and the company, even though he doesn't exactly trust Diane and knows that Jack is blind to her. Even though he loves his sister, he doesn't trust Tucker and suspects his sister has a blind spot where he's concerned as well. Sometimes Billy thinks that he's the only one in the company with its best interests at heart. He's concerned that Diane might cause mayhem. Jabot needs someone who can put their personal feelings aside to put the company first. It sounds to Lily like he thinks he should be in control. She reminds him that he's been in power there before and it didn't end well. I want to do what's right for my family's legacy, he says, assuring her he's not planning a power grab. Urging him not to try to wrestle the company away from his brother, she tells him she's been there and it's horrible. Billy assures her he won't go to war with Jack. She's glad to hear that because he wouldn't win and the casualties would be significant. He worries about what happens if he doesn't go to war. Lily replies that when she's in this situation, she asks herself what her dad would do. Thanking her, Billy says he knows what he needs to do. Phyllis meets with Daniel in the jazz lounge. She's not sure what to expect from their meeting after all that's happened. He asks what's going on with her. 
She's concerned that SNA is collapsing. That sounds good to her son, given that Sharon is her longtime rival, Nick is her repeat ex, and Adam is Adam. Heather arrives on the stairs and eavesdrops as Phyllis asks her son how things are with Lily. He explains she's great but he's less sure about himself. His mom assumes that's a bad sign and prods him for more. He says that Lily seemed off after a conversation with Heather. Having his ex in town has thrown him for a loop and made him reflect on all he did wrong. Phyllis asks if seeing Heather again has stirred up old feelings and suggests he take this opportunity to make amends. She's sure Lily won't have a problem with that. Phyllis tells Daniel that she wants him to get closure with Heather and she has special affection for her now. That doesn't sound good to him. He asks his mother if she thinks he will get back together with Heather. Heather finally interrupts. She's there for her end-of-the-day cocktail while Lucy eats pizza with friends. The lawyer talks about how gorgeous the lounge is. Looking over at the Neil Shrine, she comments on how well-remembered he is. Heather guesses this is where Phyllis collapsed at the Bicentennial. It seems like forever ago, says Phyllis. Her lawyer tells her she's got another chance now. Phyllis begs her to sit with them. Heather tells them about all the shells and driftwood that Lucy has filled their house with in Portugal. She and Daniel laugh about all the hermit crabs she brought in and how she showed up to school with pink hair. They chat about her pro bono work. The lawyer is going to have to wrap those cases up in a few weeks before she heads back to Lisbon. Phyllis asks if she misses living in the States and keeps digging. Heather admits she gets homesick occasionally, even for Geno City, although mostly because her daughter refers to it as home. That's lovely, says Phyllis, assuming Lucy considers the city home because she lives there. Heather admits she worries that her daughter isn't happy living abroad and misses Savannah. Daniel says she hasn't said anything about that to him. Thanking them for the drink, Heather gets up to leave. Phyllis hugs and pats her and then the lawyer exits. Squinting at his mom, Daniel asks what that was all about. She claims she's just trying to protect her children. He reminds her the new Phyllis is supposed to respect boundaries. He may not know where things are going with Lily, but he doesn't need his mom meddling in his relationships. Anything he had with Heather other than shared parenting is over. Staying out of this is his mom's chance to prove she's changed. Lily bumps into Heather by the staircase of the GCHC and notices she seems out of it. Heather claims it's been a long day and walks off.